Hello and welcome to the John Ark Show. Today's episode is called The Technological Future of Organized Crime. The fight against organized crime is getting more challenging than ever before. What are some of the new technologies that criminals are going to be using both today and in the near future to commit their crimes? We've done some deep research into this and we were stunned by the kind of technology that is out there and available for illicit use. Before I begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe, like, follow, and comment on the show, as well as tell you that the show is sponsored by HollywoodIsCalling.com. It's a company that allows you to purchase live calls with your favorite movie stars, more than 100 to choose from, and uh, you can purchase a live 15-second call for $19.95, or a live 30 second call for $29.95. Um, you can buy the call for yourself or you can buy a live call for your favorite friend as a gift. So give it a try. It's called HollywoodIsCalling.com. Now let's get started. Most organized crime groups, cartels, and professional criminals are extremely well financed and have tremendous resources. But federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities are pursuing them with even greater success than ever before. So we've analyzed the situation and we found out that what's going on now is an arms race, a technical logical arms race for supremacy between the authorities and crime groups. Back in the 1920s and 30s, law enforcement and criminals would, would compete with each other based on their firepower, and who had the fastest vehicles with the largest engines. From the 1970s to about 2000, the race between law enforcement and criminals was one that was determined by the quality of your legal representation. The better and more connected your lawyers were, the greater the likelihood that you would be found not guilty at trial. But over the last couple of decades, uh, things have changed dramatically. There is now a technological arms race going on between law enforcement and crime groups that is being waged for economic and judicial supremacy. Both law enforcement and criminal and the criminal underworld now understand that their ability to prevail in the future will be driven largely by the sophistication of their technology. How many assassins, politicians, or judges you have on your payroll will no longer determine how successful you are as a criminal. Now it's all about the level of technology that you have access to and whether you have the sophisticated experts on your payroll needed to capitalize upon it. So there are a number of technologies that fall into various categories uh, that are used by these people, and we're going to describe some of them. The first group is the counter surveillance technology group. The, the first layer of technological defense is the sophistication of your counter surveillance technology. These, technolo these are technologies which prevent your communications from being monitored and make it difficult for you or your team to be tracked. Back in the day, simple phone scramblers and GPS signal blockers used to be enough to keep criminals uh, safe and help them evade detection, but that's no longer the case. Now, criminals need to use very sophisticated encryption software, VPN networks, those are virtual private networks, dark web accounts, disposable burner phones and laptops, Yes, disposable laptops. These are one-time use laptops, as well as word of mouth messaging services designed to keep your messages completely off the grid. These are you know, illicit services uh, that you use uh, to have a single individual convey you know, a message, never written down, never electronically. They just memorize the message and convey it from one person in one city to another person in another city. The next form of aggressive uh, of, of technology is known as aggressive disinformation. This form of counter surveillance is very effective. Just as celebrities are known for opposing photos of the, of their of their fake mansions in cities that they don't live in, and this is all designed to throw off the paparazzi and make it more difficult for crazy fans to track down their homes. So too do criminals employ similar tactics. They will employ aggressive dis disinformation campaigns designed to confuse law enforcement about their activities, their locations, and their plans, and also their identities. They'll create, you know, an entire fake social media footprint 
and very and, sp and very aggressively spread rumors and lie campaigns about what they're up to and where they're going and what they're doing in an effort to deceive both law enforcement and competing organized crime groups that may be out to kill them or destroy their organizations. The next uh, form of technology uh, is known as a liquid identity. Back in the day, criminals would pride themselves on the cleverness uh, of, their, of their nickname uh, and, and, and its popularity with the public. That's why so many gangsters had so many great names. We believe that the future of criminal activity will involve changing your name as frequently as some people change their IP addresses. The reason for this is very powerful. If one criminal with one name commits 10 major crimes, then that individual gets the attention of law enforcement and they will pursue him very aggressively. If false identities or liquid names are employed to make it appear as though those same 10 major crimes were committed by 10 different criminals with different IDs or aliases, then law enforcement now has to dedicate time, money, and resources to the pursuit of 10 different ghosts or non-existent individuals, never really knowing who the real perpetrator of the crime was. That is a huge budgetary expense for law enforcement and it taxes their resources very heavily. The next technology is, uh, is secure communications technology. We now live in an era where most criminals know that every cell phone, laptop, and most other electronic device can be used to survey or record all their communications. So they will have to go to extraordinary lengths to prevent themselves from being recorded. What will they do? They will use something known as digital fake proxies. Criminals will have to employ deep fake video and audio masking technology to conceal their identities and their voices. There is all sorts of deep fake video masking software out there now that will change your voice when talking on the phone and make it sound like you're Brad Pitt or Johnny Depp uh, when you're engaging in some sort of unlawful phone conversation. That's important because you never want the police to be able to introduce recordings of you saying something illegal during your trial. With proper deep fake audio masking software, you can disguise your voice to sound like the Pope or Brad Pitt or the President of the United States. And that will make the evidence against you all but inadmissible in court. There's also something called deep fake video uh, alteration technology. This is done to alter or modify or compromise surveillance video. The way it works is uh, they will secure a copy of a surveillance video and they will digitally alter it with deep fake software and make it appear as though the local police chief himself robbed the bank and not some criminal. This is not that difficult to do, and it's, it's going to be very, very common. Next, we're going to talk about high-speed money laundering. Back in the day, criminals would steal money and then transfer it overseas to foreign numbered accounts where it was kept until it was needed. Those days are long gone. The latest anti-money laundering laws and regulations will no doubt, no doubt force criminals to keep moving their money from one fake account to another in a perpetual state of mobile concealment. If your money is being automatically moved to a different account or a new Bitcoin account each month, then that will make it exponentially more difficult for law enforcement to locate and seize your funds or your assets. Next, I'd like to talk about data mining. Because of data mining and its uh, accessibility and ease of use, we forecast that very soon it, it will be almost impossible for law enforcement to go undercover and to try and change their identities uh, before they infiltrate a criminal organization. Why? Because we believe that criminal groups will soon begin employing real-time facial scanning and recognition in conjunction with high-speed data mining to check the identity of everyone they encounter and do business with. <clears throat> that means that when you meet someone from one of these crime groups and you lie to them, uh, by telling them that you're really from another city and, you're, and your name is something other than what it is, then they can simply point their smartphone at camera at you and within seconds determine who you really are with facial recognition technology. Now, the same thing goes for law enforcement. They'll be able to scan the faces of everyone they survey uh, and in real time uh, determine immediately who those criminals are and what their histories are. 
We believe that gone are the days of using weapons or lawyers to protect you from going to jail. You know, in the very near future, we believe that the only thing keeping criminals out of jail will be the quality of their technology and the experts they hire to run it for them. Thank you for watching, and we will talk to you soon.